All right, today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my favorite brushes. I had asked you guys quite a few weeks ago if you wanted to see it, and a couple of you guys said yes. Now, I had already recorded this video, and I lost the footage. I don't know where it went. Don't be so mindful of the brands. Of course, some of these brands I do enjoy, but more than anything, it's the shape and the size of the brushes. For me, are really important, and they're really important because I don't have a very defined crease. And I don't have a lot, a ton of lid space. I have a slight hood right here. And then I have, if anything, more than anything, I have a lot of puffiness going on in my eyes. So the size and the shape of the brush make is very important for me because it gives me, it'll give me more control depending on the brush. And the first brushes that I want to talk about are pointy, more pencil looking brushes. Again, don't be so mindful of the brands, but I'll share which ones I have. This one is from Sigma, and it's the E30 brush. And brushes like these, for me, are great, of course, for, you know, regular use, putting inner corner highlight, blending under, under the lash line area, but these are great for laying down shadow in my inner and my outer corner, especially because it comes to a point you can have very precise placement on this area in even more so if you have even less slit space than I do it'll it'll work wonderful for you so I'll lay shadow down with these and then blend it out with something else uh, wonderful wonderful brushes I think everybody needs to have them this one right here is from crown brush not the best quality this is more of the cheaper this brush is from their cheaper line but they make good brushes also but again the little point right here is really great these can also help you create maybe like a cut crease or maybe you want to give yourself a crease in this area because they come to a point at end you can pick up the shadow with just the point and then outline you know outline where you want the shadow to go and then blend it out with something else this one's from a Walgreens brand um, it comes with the dual ended the flat shader and then this little point right here I don't know if they make it anymore it doesn't have the name of the brand but I, I want to show it to you guys because of the size I really like it now this side right here is a flat shader something like this like this size this magnitude I would never use it to lay down color for me. These are really great for maybe setting my eyeshadow base. Then I want to move on to some blending brushes. These right here, a lot of people know the 217 from MAC, which I do also have. This is the 217. I have a couple more also because I think everybody needs multiple of these brushes i think they're must-haves these are really great for me i can i can apply shadow with this if i want to go straight in with a crease color i can i just have to be more careful when coming into this area right here because i have even less less lid space and then it doesn't even go into a crease it just goes straight into puffiness here so this one i tend to contain it more in the outer area now if i'm going in with just a single shadow like like something like this right here and just doing a one shadow look then great not a problem I can go in and then just stop right here and blend it all up and diffuse the shadow but really great brushes again this is a MAC 217 Coastal Sense brushes I really enjoy similar to the 217 these are the BR 250 brushes great I have a bunch of these because they're really inexpensive they're like three bucks a piece um, this is another another coastal sense one but I have this one which is from B Pro I bought the the set on Amazon and it wasn't very expensive a really good brush I actually really I really enjoyed this brush as well it's the same thing as the 217 but my favorite blending brush is my ultimate favorite brushes and if you are a hooded girl or a puffy eye girl I think these are must-haves I need more of these brushes this right here is a real techniques dual fiber eye brush uh, it's a dual fiber which is, is a, an extra bonus because it's not going to pick up as much shadow so you can have control and build up from there but I like how narrow it is and how round like it comes almost to like a rounded tapered effect right here I love that now compared to the 217 right now this one is from morphe it's the m411 this one comes to a very fine little point right here kind of like a it's like a large pencil brush i would say so this is a pencil brush and this is the blending brush really great because you can pick up shadow with this end right here and then place it right there right it goes straight into your socket right here 
really great and then it's tapered on the ends right here so it allows you to blend at the same time while you're 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 applying your shadow you know what i mean like really great now the quality of this brush is not the greatest but it does the job this one's a an even cheaper brush from morphe it's the b38 I, this brush the bristles are really rough and prickly but i love this brush i can't stay away from it very similar just doesn't come to quite as a fine point as this one right here and then last but not least this is the 04 from Wayne Goss so all of these are very very similar in the shapes the sizes how tapered they come to the end these are wonderful if you have hood a hood or maybe not a defined crease it'll allow you to create one and be more precise with your eyeshadow when you're placing it down and blending it out because it's not quite as flared out as something like this you can see the difference here this is wider because it's pinched at the ferrule this is a little bit thinner and more just narrow so it works I love these brushes love them then I have uh, flat shader brushes and flat shader brushes are great for laying down shadow on your lid area for me sm the smaller the better because again I don't have a ton of lid space so I have to keep it controlled uh, this right here, this is a, I would say a flat shader, but more than anything, a smudger. And this works really well for my inner corner right here. I love it because it's really small. It's packed with bristles, which means it's going to pick up a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of color and then lay it down this side right here is a blender but this is too dense to blend out for me so I don't use this for blending I use this for placing also again because it's a little bit more on the narrow but different from something like this see how they're like blending brushes and they're both slim this one gives this one's a little bit more fluffy this one has a bit more gift a little bit more resistance so this would pick up a lot of product so I can lay down my shadow here and then go in with something like this to blend it out this is the 242 from MAC and this one right here because it's synthetic I can pick up shimmer shadows or pigments and lay them down here but I like the size of these a lot they're smaller so let me compare it to another flat shader that's labeled as a flat shader just for you know just as an example as a flat shader look at the size of this and look at the size of this like this i would only set my eyeshadow base with not lay down color this one's from elf now these they don't all they don't make them all the same um the cut is kind of blunt and kind of scratchy so you take a bit more of a risk but these are like a, a, a dollar or so i think but the size is what i like about it it's short and it's not super big so i like this one this one's from elf once again and then this one is the 239 from mac again very similar it's the same idea but you get my drift i can get into my inner corners really well because they're shorter they're not long um so i love this one and then another brush, I think I forgot to bring it out. Oh, here it is. Is the Sigma E55. Now, something like this is a little bit bigger than like this e.l.f. one or this MAC one. So this one I use mainly, mainly in the center portion. I can go in, but I can't go in too far because then it'll get into my crease area. So that's that one. And then lastly, I have my large blending brushes. I think everybody needs large blending brushes, even if you have hooded lids or puffy lids, because they help you clean up harsh lines. This one is the 03 from Wayne Goss. This is a Stila 02. They don't make this anymore, I don't think. These work really well for one shadow kind of looks like the shadow that I shared from the Maya Mia. I could just go in and then just apply it and then diffuse it from there with these brushes. This is the Sigma E50, E35. The Sigma brushes are not the best brushes, but it's an option. The M513 from Morphe, another one that's not the best quality. <clears throat> this is the 224 from MAC. And then this is the Stila one. And I just want to compare to uh, something like this, like the tapered ones. Look at how much bigger it is. If I was to start off with a shadow like with this brush, like look at how much space it would take up on my eye. This is a lot of space taken up as opposed to something like this. It's so much smaller and more controlled. So I love these brushes. Highly recommend the little, the more tapered, more slim. Slim brushes are for me are the best. Uh, I think I forgot a brush. This one right here from Sila, it doesn't matter because I don't think they make this anymore, but I want to compare it to 
like a 217. Do you see how much smaller it is? I love this brush. They just don't make it. This is a 05 and very similar. This one though, I can go in and on the outer corner because it's so small. You can see that right there. All right, my battery's gonna die, so I hope you guys found this video helpful. And I thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.